Today we're gonna make scrunchies and I'm using my Addy knitting machine. We're gonna start off with scrap yarn. So we're going to cast on in the normal fashion and you want to try and use yarn that is going to be a completely different color than what your project color is going to be. And you're gonna see why this is really important when we do scrunchies. It's going to make your life so much easier. The trick that I'm gonna teach you here. So make sure you stick around and watch the video. So again, I'm going to do eight rows. I normally do five, but when I'm doing scrunchies, I do eight. Now I'm gonna take another contrasting scrap yarn color and I'm going to use the white here, and I'm going to cast on one row. Now stick with me here. If you stick with me to the end of the video, you'll see why. Again, this is going to make your life so much easier, and I finally figured it out. One row. And again, make sure it's a contrasting color from the original first eight rows, and then your main color. Resetting my counter back to zero. I'm going to start. Now you can make three different sizes with scrunchies, a small, medium, and large. A large is 20 rows, a medium is 15, and a small is 10. So I'm going to do 15 rows. I'm going to make a medium. We're at the end of my rows, and I'm just going to cut a little bit of a tail, not too long, but I want to leave myself some yarn at the end just in case. We're going to go back to our contrasting scrap yarn. I'm going to knit eight rows once again. Once you finish your eight rows, you can just spin your machine and your project will fall right off the machine. Here we go, here's my tube. Now you wanna carefully stretch this out, being careful not to undo the scrap yarn on either end. Give it a nice little stretch. Now you want to turn this inside out and arrange your tails so you can find them easily because we're going to have to match those up in just a minute. And I made it a little too long, so I just trimmed some of the end there. Grab an elastic. Now, I just picked these up at my local CVS. The easiest way I found to doing this is to just lay it out on the table, and you kind of want to scrunch it in your hand. Get it a little bit even. And then be careful of flying hair bands. <laughs> anyway, get your hair band on your work and get it into the middle. Now locate the tails at either end. We're looking for the beginning of our work of the main color and you see the yellow at the top and then the peachy pink color at the bottom and you just want to line up the loops we're looking for the very outside loop now you can see why it's really important to have contrasting scrap yarn So I'm just trying to get the two tails together there, again, the yellow and the purp, uh, pinky color, and you wanna slip your crochet hook, and I think this was a five crochet hook. And if, if you've watched my other tutorials, 
we want to bind the end together just like we do with our um, our hats and just like we do with our fingerless gloves and you just want to get the top loop on either side back and forth and pull it and slip stitch it all the way around really taking your time and ensuring you don't miss any loops otherwise you're going to have drop stitches they're fairly easy to fix but it is a pain so do your best and you really just want to try to get a good closure and i love the way this looks at the end when it's completed We've made it just about all the way around and we're going to get the very final loops that meet the other side where we started. Again, this takes a little finagling. This can be a little bit of a struggle, but once you get the loops, it comes together fairly easily. And then you're just gonna grab the two ends, the yellow and that pink peach color. You're going to slip stitch it through and complete it so you have a knot. Grab this one because the color was just so much better to decipher on camera. One end is always easier than the other and this is where you're gonna see that one single row that I did of the white is going to come in handy. So you just remove your scrap yarn as normal on the easy end and just pull it out I always try to get it out in one piece. I don't like to cut mine out because it's wasteful and I can just reuse this again on my next project. And it pulls out pretty easily. Every once in a while I get a little knot at the end and then I'll just trim it off. But this one came out really easy. I had a little part there where it kind of knotted up on it. So it's so satisfying when you can just pull it out in one piece. I was actually pulling the wrong end. You see me trying to figure it out there. It's like a little puzzle. It's a lot of scrap yarn, but it makes your life so much easier when you're trying to seam these together because there's not much of a working area. Now here's the beauty of the white that we did the one row. You just kind of have to find where it starts, get it started, and you usually can just pull it out in one piece again. Sometimes it will catch on itself and you just have to work it. I ended up breaking it, which I didn't mean to do, but not a big deal. I just pulled it from the other end. And you're gonna see the magic here in just a minute. Watch the rest of my scrap yarn. It comes right off. It's amazing. So the extra scrap yarn is so worth it. I'm just looking to see if I had any drop stitches. Now to finish these off, you just want to tie the two colors together or the two ends together that you had. And then you're going to take your darning needle and you're going to weave the ends back in through the crochet work you don't want to cut the knot I find that as you wear these you know it can start to unravel so you just want to weave it back in just like all our other projects and these make amazing gifts I'm making these for my nieces and I love these I find them just so much softer in my hair and they're actually really pretty so there you go that's the medium and then I made the large and a small. If you enjoyed this video, I'll see you guys on the next one. Happy knitting.